everybody? Welcome back to another video. Bamboo, you want your Advent treat? Ooh. Gentle. more of a success than yesterday. Awesome. Wow. Jadis, do you want your advent treat? Okay. You excited? I don't think you liked these treats from yesterday. Oh, these are kind of cute. Kitty kittens! No, no, no. You're a dog. Kitty kitten! There you go. You want it? There you go. Jadis! Kitty kitten! Oh, rude. These are healthy, Jadis. She literally turned her back on it. You guys, if you want treats, you're getting the healthy option. There's no way around it. All right, so you can go ahead and do the honors. Do the Find honors. day two. Oh, I do feel honored. There's two. Could this be Gouda? Gouda! I hope it's Gouda. <laughs> that was terrible. I'm sorry. It's cheesy. <laughs> well, you've had Gouda before, haven't you? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Like a heavier cheese, but very creamy at the same time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, the rest of it on a cracker. I think so. Oh, I'm glad we got this calendar. Me too. <laughs> Thank you. Go go. Yep. Today's video, I want to make another stuffed animal. And this is actually going to be the same animal that I've made in the past, but I want to try a new pattern for it. In the past, I have made stuffed animals of a giraffe. And I currently have these two that are for sale on my Etsy shop if you want to go snag them because they are very, very cute. And I absolutely love this pattern. I think it is adorable. But an issue I have run into with these is specifically I have a friend who would really, really like to get one of these for her daughter. But her daughter is currently a baby. And this is felt. And this can be pulled apart rather easily, making it not really baby safe. And I told her that. And like it is listed in the description of the Etsy saying that the mane and tail and the, the feet, they're made of felt. And so when she messaged me, she's like, do you think it would be safe? I was like, mm, probably better not. So that got me to thinking like, I wish I could find a really cute giraffe pattern that I could use that wouldn't have this issue that I would run into. And I mean, I could just find a different fabric to use for the mane and tail on this and like solve that problem. But because all of the stuffed animals that I use, I use like secondhand fabric, I am limited on what I have available. So if I could find something that it wouldn't matter what fabric I used because it didn't have these singular, easily pulled off parts, I would have a lot more variety with pattern and making it look cute than I would if I tried to limit myself to using a fabric that I had that wouldn't just pull apart like this if it was only a single layer. So none of that might have made sense at all. But all of that to say, I am making a different giraffe pattern today, a brand new pattern. This pattern I got from the Etsy shop BZ Art, which will be linked in the description box because I have a bunch of her sewing patterns and I love so many of them. So that is where I got this pattern from. The pattern I'm going to be using today is from an Etsy shop called, I, I think it's pronounced Choli Night. It's C Holy and then Night, like Night of the Round Table, like K N I G H T. Her link will also be in the description box below. But 
she releases on her website a free pattern, a free sewing pattern every single week. And a while back I had gone through and saved a ton of them. One of them being a giraffe pattern that she has. And I've really been wanting to try it because I think it's adorable and something really unique about her patterns that I've not seen anywhere else is she includes in her patterns sewing embroidery files as well. And while I don't have embro an embroidery machine to use, she includes in the print off like the exact size and shape that you need for applique and I thought to myself, I could save those images to my computer and turn them into vinyl pieces. I could save them in my Cricut and get them sized and I could cut them out of vinyl and heat press the vinyl onto these. And then they would be these adorable little kawaii looking face pieces and designs. So that's what I'm gonna be attempting to do today is following her pattern for making her version of a giraffe plush and I'm also going to be sizing and shaping all of these different applique pieces into my Cricut Design Space so I can cut them out with my vinyl cutter and attach them onto the plush and see how it goes. I have so many plush animals that I want to make. So many. So, <laughs> I am... My coffee, my afternoon coffee is currently being made right now. Like, you're gonna have to excuse this introduction because it is rough. Because I have only had one cup of coffee today and my brain is kind of pinging all over the place right now. What I am going to do is go get my coffee, print off this pattern, and get started. In case you were wondering how I made all of these into my Cricut Design Space, very, very simple. Basically, I just went to the original pattern and I scrolled all the way down to the page that has the applique information. I screenshot this rectangle and I put that screenshot into my Cricut Design Space and made all the background transparent, got rid of all, of all of the wording, inserted it into here and took, so I took the tallest point of the original piece, which was this little spot and the farthest, the lowest point of the piece, which was this spot. And I measured it on the paper, which is sized perfectly for all the pieces I'm about to cut out. And then I just inserted that size in here and it sized everything I needed to. And then I contoured it, I copy and pasted it, and then I contoured it a couple times so I could have all of these pieces be separate in all of these different sections over here. And then I just changed the colors so when I go to cut it out, I'll be able to easily put them on my mats and cut out different colors that I want. Not saying that like the yellow and the brown and all that are the final colors, that's just what I have right now. And if you don't know Cricut stuff, none of that's gonna make sense. And I'm sorry. If you want like a really in-depth tutorial, let me know in the comments and I will make a whole separate video for that because if this works out well, I'm gonna be doing it a lot. I got my coffee and while I don't have a giraffe mug, I do have this elephant mug and I figure it was fairly appropriate. All of my pieces are cut out and I have all of the seam allowances on the pieces that I need them on. And the very next thing I'm going to do is get my vinyl pieces cut out. And what I'm gonna do is, because this is the first time I'm making this stuffed animal, just like I do with all of my other stuffed animals when it is the first draft and I wanna make sure I have the pattern down, is I use scrap stuff. So this is my bag of scrap vinyl. It is very full, there's a lot happening in here. So I'm going to go into this and just find scrap pieces of vinyl that I can use. And there's so much in here. I have so many options, like, I have so many options. This thing is quite literally bursting with colors. That's what you're gonna see next is me picking out vinyl to use and getting that cut out and then getting it heat pressed onto the pieces because those have to all be applied before we start sewing anything.
All of the pieces are heat pressed on. I didn't film any of it because I had to quickly rush to find another scrap of gray vinyl so I could get another one of these because I only cut out one side initially because I forgot I needed to double it and make a second. So I did that and then after I printed it, I realized I forgot to flip it. So it was like a mirror image for each side. So one of these, this one looks a little funky. I think, yeah, I think it was this one that I had to kind of guess and like cut them out. So it's just a little funky. And same with the eyes. They aren't like exactly how they're supposed to be because I had to like finagle it a little bit. But we have the note, the nostrils, all of the eyes and the spots for the body. So now it is finally time to start sewing. So I kind of forgot that I was filming a video. <laughs> I got, I filmed that little clip of a time lapse and then I put my phone down and I'm like, this time lapse is boring. I'm not gonna film any more of it. I'll check in when I get this part of the head done or something. And then I just got into the zone and I totally forgot to film anything. So it's not fully done. I do have the head completely finished. So this is what the head looks like. Still definitely some improvements I need to make, but, and then you can see like my ladder stitch was not good in the back. That is rough looking. Kind of looks like Yoda from this way a little bit. But I think the face is super cute. Obviously I still need to add the horns and the nose, but that is like the last, last step. So that's what that looks like all done. So that has just been set aside over there. I pulled out my nicer sewing machine to work on this some more because I was getting annoyed with my other one. So I pulled this one out, it's been much better. And this is the body so far. So I am working on stuffing this. I have everything sewn. These feet are like tricky. So you can see right there the seam actually, like I missed a part of the seam, but that's why I'm using practice fabric so I can see where those mistakes are and I can adjust and correct when I use better fabric. So I've just started sewing. I did put a little pocket of poly pellets in the back just to help weigh it down because once that head is on here, it's gonna be really top heavy. So having a little like pouch of poly, pe poly pellets in like the butt area is gonna help balance it out so it doesn't fall over. So right now I am stuffing it, getting the body nice and firm, making sure all four feet are really stuffed firm. The tail I think I messed up on as well because it said just to stuff like the end of it. So that's all I did and I left this unstuffed and it's like very, floppy and I'm pretty sure I was supposed to stuff like the majority of this part of the tail as well and it would still hang over but it would be not as like floppy and sad so I'm gonna go ahead and keep stuffing this and then maybe I'll time lapse stitching on the head to the body if I remember all right here is the body totally stuffed uh, I'm going to have to leave this until tomorrow because it is late and I need to finish getting supper ready for Dan for when he comes home. So this is what it looks like. So tomorrow I will close that and then you stick the head on like that and then we will attach the horns and the nose to the head and then it should be done. It is the next day, which means it is time to finish this giraffe. This is what we're looking at. Let me see. I bring this back a little bit. Hey, you can see it better. So obviously we still need the horns and the nose, but I mean, the head doesn't bobble around too much. The weight from the back, having that poly pellet in there gives it like a really, well, unless I do that, gives it a good weight to it. So I think it balances really nicely. It stands really nicely other than just getting those things on, like, this is really, really cute. I'm excited about it. 
I wanted to show how you're supposed to do this muzzle because I thought it was really, really interesting. So this is the front part of the nose. And if you look, like they have like the front part of the nose and then there's a back piece that after you sew all of these darts, you actually sew the back piece entirely on. So like right now this is closed, like there's no opening anywhere, but it's inside out. So then what you do is you, you're supposed to take just a little, like in the middle of this back piece, and you cut it and you cut just a hole big enough that you can turn this right side out. You know, obviously making sure you don't accidentally like cut the front of it, but then you turn it right side out. So there is the nose just like that, but it is now, it has a hole in the back. That is what it looks like in the front. So now what I do is I'm going to stuff it through this hole until it's nice and firm and then I'm gonna stick it, here's my little giraffe head, onto the nose, onto the, you can't see any of that. <laughs> here's my giraffe. I'm gonna stuff the nose and then you stick it on right there. So the little giraffe nose. And here is the finished first draft of this little giraffe. Look at how cute it is. It's like a million times cuter now that it actually has a nose and, and like horns. It's so cute. Look at it. I plan on making a second one to show you at like the very, very end of this video. But what I want to do is go through and explain things that I know I'm going to need to do differently in that second one. So starting off with the head. The only part of like the head itself that I think I want to adjust is the ears when I put them in. The instructions said to like angle them up some like this ear is, but you can see on this ear like I didn't do any angling up. So I'm when I put that in I need to make sure I angle it up a little more so they sit up like that some. Uh, the horns I'm happy with, the eyes I'm happy with, the vinyl I need to make sure I don't mirror one of them or I do mirror it one I can't print them all I can't cut them out both of them facing the same direction because I made that mistake so like a whole half of this giraffe is like funky with the vinyl for the muzzle muzzle is great everything worked perfect I just need to be more careful when I sew that back piece of the muzzle to this front piece because then when I stick it on I need to make sure I am attaching it closer to this seam. Otherwise you just see this seam hanging out and that's no bueno. Nobody wants to see that. Uh, the head attaching it to the body. I want to try to attach it a little wider around. So it has just slightly less wobble to it. That was just, I thought I was attaching it far like wide enough around and I think I'm just gonna do a little bit more next time. Vinyl pieces are cute. Again, this is the side that was messed up, which is why like the head goes over that vinyl piece and this dart sews into this big piece because this piece is actually, I think supposed to be in the front or something. Yeah, like it's supposed to be up here. So like this side, you can see this top one, there's space there and this back one, the the dart does not hit any of those. So that's just a one side, that's like a vinyl thing again. The tail, cute, I love it. Definitely going to stuff like this part of it the next time because I didn't do that this time because I thought that's what the instructions said and I just misunderstood because I'm pretty sure you want to do that because that just looks floppy and not good. The only other thing about this is the legs. Like this was actually a really difficult part that I didn't anticipate being that difficult. So a lot of it just had to do with making sure I was getting all of the seams sewn closed with the legs, which as you can tell right there and there and there, I did not fully close those seams when I was sewing over them. So I need to make sure I go over those a lot slower next time. I think at that point, I was using not this machine, but I was using my older machine. I think I will have a much easier time doing these seams using this machine. So hopefully that will help solve it, but I will also be going slower to make sure I do it properly. Um, and then this one, you can see it just kind of got a little funky there. So definitely going to be going slower with all of those, but and then, yeah, again, still, and then with like these front seams, just going slow 
to line everything up, which I think once I line up the belly and the legs better, that'll look better too. It's like that back seam isn't that bad. That's not terrible. Uh, other than that, the only other thing I think I'm gonna do differently is just like an order of things. And this is purely for preference. And that is I am going to attach the horns and the nose of the giraffe to the head before I attach the head to the body. So that the head being attached to the body will be the very last step. Because I ended up, I found it really awkward trying to sew on the nose and the horns when I had this whole body to deal with. So like I'm trying to sew it and I'm sitting, have it in my lap and it's like awkward and not laying flat. And I think it would just be a lot easier trying to sew this without the whole body attached. So I'm gonna do that next. But otherwise, I think it is really super duper cute. And I cannot wait to have a really cute one. I mean, I'm gonna keep this one for forever. But I'm very excited to make this again and have one with like good, super cute fabric and good, super cute vinyl that matches. So I'm gonna make that off camera. You don't need to see me make a whole nother giraffe. That would be boring and repetitive. So let me show you the new one. And here is the finished giraffe. Look at how cute that is. It turned out so adorable. I absolutely love it. So you can see, I did a couple of different things on this one. I decided to go an overall more natural giraffe color palette. Um, you just, you know, the basic brown and yellow. I, I realized after I started making this that I did not own any brown heat transfer vinyl. That's probably something I'm going to order so I have it on hand. But I had this really fun glitter heat transfer vinyl and what I love about it is it doesn't flake and it's not super textured so you're like I'm not I didn't get glitter all over the place like I could go crazy with this and like it's not it doesn't flake off like there's no glitter on my hand at all so I love that and I used that and then I used a like bronze metallic for the eyes which I really like. You can see on this eye I had a little bit of issues with the vinyl still just working out some kinks learning about the different types of vinyl and all that good stuff but Overall, I am very happy with how this giraffe turned out. I think it is beautiful. I did fix all of the previous little quirks from this one. Like you can see it just, also like, I don't know why this one's so much bigger. Like it's massive compared to this one, but I use the same size everything. So I have no idea. So there are these two side by side, my very first attempt, my very second attempt. I am much happier with this one. The tail is not nearly as like floppy and sad looking. Where these feet, I had a ton of issues with puckering and like not actually getting all of the seams. This one, it came out much smoother. You can still see that like the brown from the feet kind of like, I don't know what you would call that, like bleed over. I don't quite know what you would call that. But I mean, that's just, all of the seams are totally closed everywhere. There are no open seams anywhere. And these like front seams there and that back seam are much cleaner than on this one. Like you can see right there, I had a bunch of like puckering issues as well. Don't have that anymore. The head is not at nearly as wobbly because I did kind of secure it. I did secure it much better. The nose, you don't see. Let me see if I can get it to the light. There you go. You can't hardly see that seam at all because I actually attached it at the proper place. Whereas again, that seam, you see it very obviously. The ears sit up better, which I really, really like. And I think they are very, very cute. Yes, I am very happy with how this looks. And just for comparison's sake, this is what the other giraffe patterns that I have available on my shop look like compared to this giraffe pattern. You can see they are very, very different styles, and I love them both. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. As you are watching this right now, this morning, I put this giraffe live on my Etsy shop. So if you want to go snag this one, definitely head over there as soon as you watch this video so you make sure you can grab it and it doesn't get sold because it is very adorable. 
and there's a good chance my mom is gonna try to buy it. So, or just tell me to give it to her, which I'm not gonna do. I'm listing it so you can have it if you want it. Make sure to head over to the, my Etsy shop. The link is in the description box of this video and go snag this little giraffe for yourself. And maybe one of these two if you want to as well. But like I was saying, I wanted to do this giraffe pattern because this one is baby safe. And I know there's a lot of vinyl on it and the glitter, but the glitter is not very rough at all. So you wouldn't have to worry about it scratching and the tail is much more secure. You don't have to worry about it just pulling apart. So yes, definitely a much more child baby safe than those because of the mane and the tail the way that those are made but i hope you have enjoyed this video if you did please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in a future video probably making more stuffed animals